Where's the A plus? Hello, this is Lanny Pavel, formerly the genius full of glory and renown. And I love to come to New York City and have pizza. Unfortunately, I've been to Frankie's <laughs> and uh, I can't get off the toilet. <laughs> Where's the A plus? Hello, this is Lanny Pavel, formerly the genius full of glory. Welcome to another episode of Monty and the Pharaoh every Thursday from 8.05 to 9 p.m. I'm Mike Monty. This is the Pharaoh. And we welcome all our guests. And in studio is WWF, WWE legend, leaping Lanny Poffo, the genius Lanny Poffo. Mr. Poffo, thank you for joining us. You could call me Lanny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. All right. <laughs> I need respect. I want to be young. You there got you go. it, pal. You also neglected to mention this is the executive consultant to Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. I was once the executive consultant yeah. to Mr. Currently. Perfect. Mr. Perfect, you're Sorry. the man who's never wrong. Can you prophesy what we're about to do? By the power of the genius and the world's smartest man, rely on my incredible IQ. Ah, very good. Very good. Many belts this time is held. Yeah. We have uh, Atlantic Grand Prix champion, Gulf Coast Tag Team champion with his brother, Macho Man Randy Savage. ICW champion, which was his father, Angelo Papo's organization. ICW Southeast champion. ICW United States champion. (sighs) 
ICW World Heavyweight Champion, also uh, back in the day, ranked in the PWI Top 500, which was always a very prestigious list. Yeah, according to us, we, we grew we up on PWI, so that's where we used to yeah. rank and look at our wrestlers. Yeah, the, day, you know? the days before the internet. <laughs> before Wi-Fi, there was PWI. There yeah. was, that's right. Very good. Very good. It was the pipeline to all the wrestlers we loved. So, Lonnie, let's jump off. Uh, I want to speak about your father, Angelo Poffa, one of the all-time greats, Angelo Poffa, sorry. Um, can you tell us a little bit about him and what it was like growing up being the son of the great Angelo Poffa? Wow, those are big shoes to fill. Mm. And you know what? I quit trying to fill them because he was from the greatest generation. And he was a um, tremendous fellow. He was uh, served in the U.S. Navy okay. in World War II. Okay. He went to DePaul University under the GI Bill. He um, did a lot of great things. As a matter of fact, let me summarize by giving you the poem I wrote for his funeral mm. uh, many years ago. It was, uh, he died at the age of almost, almost 85, and it was March 4th, um, 2010 when he passed away. So this funeral was March the 6th in Downers Grove, Illinois. And I was in the St. Joseph Catholic Church where I once went to confession and got thrown out because I said, you first. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. A little levity. <laughs> a little levity to ease you're the not, You're not taking one for the team. <laughs> no. Anyway. Fight the real enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so right. anyway, my poem, as yeah. I can remember it, is, it was back in 1945 on Independence Day. The Nazis had surrendered. Japan was on its way. My dad was in the Navy, as history will tell. As he was bleeding through the mats, a world record fell. He did 6,000 sit-ups with an extra 33 to glorify our Savior who died on Calvary. Wow. And Robert Ripley's feature celebrated this event. Giving credence to success is not an accident. That's always been his motto through times both good and bad. He's a real Hall of Famer and the world's greatest dad. Thank you. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's incredible. Oh my God. When he did this, uh, this 6,033 sit ups, wh when was this, can I ask? What year was this by any chance? July the 4th, 1945. How did I know you would know the date on top of it? Yeah, wow. That's yes, incredible. and uh, I was born. Does that record still stand, by the way? No, sorry. it doesn't. Um, okay. They keep okay. beating it, but my father did it with his, with his Navy style, with his hands behind his head. Okay. And now in the Guinness Book of World Records, they keep beating it, but they, they do swinging. Okay. How and, long did uh, it take him to do this? Because he did this four, uh, four hours, ten minutes. <laughs> wow! Can any is everyone picturing this at home? And it's amazing. what was great? <laughs> ab what was great about it? Back before the internet, back before right, radio, television, there was newspaper or nothing. Right. And newspaper was, and you all saw the movie Citizen Kane, mm -hmm. and that was the story of who? William Randolph Hearst. Oh, right, right with the newspapers. Yes, that's right. And um, Rosebud. Rose, Rose Bud. <laughs> oh yes. my God. And, uh, it's a masterpiece. It was. Yeah. It was a masterpiece. Yeah. And then yep. his um, Orson Welles' last words, don't let that bastard put crayons on my movie. And mm. that was that was his mm. message to Ted Turner, who colorized everything. Right. And oh. he says... I hated when he did that. I well, hated that. He says, the last time I checked, I bought the movie. So anyway... Um, where, where, what was the question? Something oh, just about growing up with, with having your father. You know, what kind of figure was he at home? Was he was he intimidating to you by any chance at any point? This is, <laughs> I mean, were you like ever fe fearful of dad or was it more like, you know? I was more fearful of the macho man. Interesting. Okay. No, really. Well, we can get to that dynamic. Yeah, yeah, we can but, get to uh, that dynamic. It was player. like having two fathers oh, and yeah. a mother. You know, and, ha and, and on that subject, everybody knows your brother, Hall of Fame wrestler, you know, macho man Randy Savage. What was your relationship like growing up together? How competitive were the two of you with each other, and was there any? It was not competitive. Was there any? Was there any jealousy? It was anything? not competitive. Uh, he was the superior. The I was the dominator. Okay. Okay. He was the alpha. Okay. I was not even the beta. <laughs> okay. But now that everybody's now that I'm the last man standing, okay. I've decided to play the role of alpha with wobbly knees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By all means. Yeah, um, because there's one eye is king in the valley of the blind. And uh, 
That makes me the alpha. In fact, I had the epiphany when I was 59 years old. Okay. You might think when I turned 60, that would be the... It, it wasn't. Okay. And I said, I am the older brother now. So hmm. I can make unpopular decisions. That's when I decided to, against, to go against my brother's wishes and put Randy in the WWE Hall of Fame. Randy was against this? He was against it. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what he said to you, maybe perhaps about all of this? You know, what was it? Why didn't he want to go in? Was it where he was with, the, with Vince at the given moment? Just very angry. And why, was uh, he, why was he, if I can ask, see, why was he? Here's the, here's the problem. I follow my favorite person on YouTube okay. is Dr. Wayne Dyer. Okay, I know who that is. Okay. okay. And uh, I recommend that. Go on YouTube. He died a few years ago of okay. um, um, leukemia or something, but I'm sure he fought bravely. And um, I've got a list of rules on my refrigerator, and one of the most important rules is there are there is no such thing as a justified resentment. So, and yet, I feel I have to fight my brother's battles okay. and represent him and okay. my father. Mm -hmm. Okay, where it began, I think it was November 16th, 1987. Okay. That was in the Meadowlands Arena. They were going to have a Legends Battle Royal. Yep, okay. We were talking about, go on. 20 men are okay. going to be in that Battle Royal. Al Costello just got the call from Pat Patterson, okay. and Al and my father were friends, kind of like they have to be friends because nobody else is alive, you know. Right. So, um, Al, Al, I can't do the Australian accent. So, Al Costello, if anyone doesn't know at home, was part of the great tag team, the Kangaroos, correct? The fabulous Kangaroos. Yep, go ahead. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, Pat Patterson has just called me up. There's going to be a battle royal with Bobo Brazil, Killer Kowalski, Lou A legends battle royal. Yeah, okay. Gene Kaniski. Mm -hmm. um, all these guys that were my father's friends. Great names, yeah. So I remember my father and my brother, we came over to see our parents from the road. We were on the road together and we came in together. But my dad knew who had the clout, who had the stroke, who had the power. So he ignored me and went right to Randy and he said, there's going to be a battle royal of legends in... Um, There's going to be a battle royal. I heard okay. a reverb. I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry about uh, that. That's all right. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Onward. So anyway, and he says, do you think you can get me on that card? Don't worry, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, it's done. Okay. Randy, get it done. Randy's got it. And then I think I'm standing there in Cap Center in Landover, Maryland, which no longer exists, I think. Nothing exists anymore, does it? No. It seems that way. Well, Madison Square Garden's still there. We still got that. They only wrestle there one time a year, but it's still there. It's right. still there. Yeah. Right. They got a few Knicks games. and A couple of Knicks games, a uh, couple of Liberty now. games, and you might catch a WWE event every so often. Does so. Circus ever come to town? Circus, uh, circus, circus is done. It's done. being done. Circus is done. Animal cruelty, Mr. Yeah, Poffo. You haven't heard? It's cruel to elephants. It's cruel to elephants and lions and here. tigers. <laughs> That's yes. it? Oh, my. And bears. <laughs> Good Lord. Judy Garland. <laughs> so, okay, so what, what's your father's what ready to go? Yep. You're assuming Randy's got this so taken care of. My brother grabs me with his man hands. Boy, did he have man hands. Good. Oh, Boom. And he puts that face against my face and he says, They're not going to let Dad in the battle royal. Okay. And I said, Why not? Because they're expletive, 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 F this and blank that and. Out of words. Anger. Yeah. And um, he says, I was going to quit, and I was going to have you quit. But Dad insists that we stay here and make the money. Okay. And I thought to myself, that's Thank a relief you, because, uh, you know, yeah, okay. I was married. I had a daughter. I still have a daughter. No longer married. Okay. But Thank God. Well, <laughs> now, wait a minute. Like this Let's not. My, my, not they, this might, they might be listening. Oh, I'm, might, sorry. I'm sorry. They might be listening. and <laughs> Sit um, there stirring it. Cold and you know what? <laughs> It's all, I am a divorced man, but it's all worthwhile because I've got my beautiful daughter and my very there beautiful go. grandson. There you go. Nice. Very and, nice. Um, he's about 18 months old, likes to load his diapers, and, uh, you know, he's very little. <laughs> 
Responsibility. There you go. Yeah, might be a Democrat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my! <laughs> oh man! Uh oh! Hey, hey, huh? uh, Evan, hey Evan! Evan! Oh, oh, He's just kidding, He's Evan. Start just kidding. Just kidding. Scream oh, from here. No problem, guys. Fling. Just kidding. Just kidding. Anyway, um, I've just alienated half the base. <laughs> you know we... By the way, we're speaking to the great Evan Ginsberg, who could be seen on Village Connection Radio every Sundays. Sunday from 11 to 1 p.m. Right. with the. Evan Ginsburg show. And we never let politics interfere with our friendship. There you We've go. been friends for many, many years, and we have a. It's based on trust. Trust is a must, or your game is a bust. There you go. Anyway, the I said, why, mix. why don't they want Randy and. Why don't want the, my father in the, in the Battle Royal? And uh, he blamed it all on Pat Patterson. And I. And Chief J. Strongbow. And do you agree? Was it Pat Patterson? Was it Pat Patterson? Was it Pat Patterson? Pat Patterson? Who was behind that? You just answered your own question. Yes. There you go. Well, then that's and that. Now he's in denial. In fact, that's why we asked. When I went to the <laughs> 2015 Battle Royal, okay. he brings me to the side. Now I only came in with three things in mind to that Battle Royal: go to San Jose, read my speech, and go home. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there to fraternize. I wasn't there to make amends, and I certainly don't want to get in a fight, or can you imagine, I'm, he must be 80 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, right. if I lose to an 80-year-old, that's bad, <laughs> and if I beat up an 80-year-old, that's, that's also bad. bad. Right, either that's way, you bad. can't win. You're screwed either way. That's right. pretty bad. Either, well, yeah. Pat, oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. Jeez, that was not <laughs> the best way to describe no, it. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. I'm trying to keep this over, over and above board. Oh, Lanny, you okay. look so good. <laughs> oh, oh, Lanny. Lanny. <laughs> So anyway, um, so Pat told me, feel good. Pat both said, I'm sorry about the battle royal, but it was just a oversight. Okay. Well, false. <clears throat> it was an intentional oversight. And, but look at Monty and the Pharaoh. Let's mm. look at each other in the sunglasses here. Okay. Sure. I can't prove that I'm right any more than he can prove that I'm wrong. But here's what I can prove. If this was a court of law, what can you prove? Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Did you see the DVD, the Macho Man, that the WWE put out? Yeah, sure. Watch it again for the first time. Pat Patterson has nothing good to say about my father and nothing good to say about my brother in the whole DVD. Now, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it. Mm. He's already suffering from overexposure. He shouldn't have been in the DVD. He has nothing good to say about... This is a eulogy. Mm. This is... If you don't have anything good to say, it's wrestling. Fake it. Right? Yeah. Right. Make something up. But there was a lot of good things to say. Now, what they said to... Okay, this is what makes me angry. Let's not get angry. Get, get angry, Let's man. Let's think about Wayne Dyer and that list of rules. Cleanse I yourself. Rules. Mr. Poffa. Okay. He's cleansed. Just say what you got to say. Okay. Cleanse yourself. I'm going to just try to, I'm going to just try not to get overheated here. Okay. Because at my age. You listen. Know, I, I do it every week. I, listen, I, I I, there's a couple of things that can happen. Get angry, get overheated. You want to punch someone. There's this guy Pete here. He'll oh, just take a <laughs> punch him right in the face. <laughs> oh, my God. Leave Pete. Yeah, go ahead. Pete. Pete, you've mellowed over the years. Yeah, yeah. Look at you <laughs> bobbing your head. <laughs> Look out. Go ahead, Mr. Poffa. You know, I, I got to ask this, though. Why did Pat, what is Pat's problem with the family? Okay. What is his problem? First of all, what he said about my father, he insinuated, him. he insinuated, like, nobody saved money like Angelo Poffo. Okay, my father and Pat Patterson were both raised in the Depression era. Mm -hmm. Okay. My Pat was in Montreal. My father was in Downers Grove, Illinois. But they were both shivering in the summer. You know what I mean? Right. Things were rough for my mother too. And my father's goal in life was to give Randy and I a better life than they had. And they did. Yeah. Now my father did a lot of self-sacrificing on the road. And, but he brought the money home and he built a beautiful home. I had my own bedroom and we had a 20 by 40 uh, foot pool. We had the first color TV, I remember. Okay. We had a s pool table in the basement. So when you talk about saving money, he's, he was self-denying. He was self so he could be good 
provider mm. to Randy and myself. And if Randy were here, he would say that my father was the greatest father ever. There you go. And we have, I have very big appreciation for this. But, okay, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but since everybody does it, and there's nobody alive anymore, mm. Fair enough. Um, Bam Bam Bigelow, they never say, they never say that he was cheap or thrifty or any other bad euphemism for being, um, for, so, hey, blessed are the, blessed are um, those who are persecuted for righteousness. Mm -hmm. It is good and wise to be thrifty, bring it home, spend it on your family, mm -hmm. and have a savings, and have an investment. And when your um, passive income is greater than your expenses, there you are. Right. And you don't have to work anymore. And um, so what I'm trying to tell you is, nobody said Bam Bam was cheap, but he used $100 bills for toilet paper. And he stayed at the Acme Rinse Central Arms Waldorf Plaza. But go ahead and Wikipedia him and you will find that he couldn't pay his child support. Mm. Gotcha. My I'm father sure. not only paid his child support, mm. he stayed married to my mother for 61 years, separated only by death. Right. And I don't know, that's getting to be rare now. Very. Okay. Right. I'm yes. definitely not going to beat the 61-year-old record. No. You know, but... Um, once bitten, twice shy. But like I said, I go back and say, I'm glad it was worth every bit of it because I lost my mother, lost my father, lost my brother. No flowers from the WWE. No cards from the WWE. Was that an oversight? Bullshit. Was that an oversight? No. And you know, when I went there, I said, hey, I introduced myself to everybody and this and that. They said, yeah, we're with PR. I said, oh, they got PR people you know, public relations people on retainer, then why don't you give flowers for my mother, oh my father, or brother? See what I mean? It's ridiculous. You know, you know, we got flowers from everybody when Randy died. Everybody. Yeah. And you know who's the most famous person to give flowers to my brother? Who? For my mother. Okay. Joey Votto, the MVP, 2010 Cincinnati Reds, mm -hmm. all-star, Second place in the All Stars last year mm -hmm. uh, to Giancarlo Stanton, and trust me, when those flowers came, they were big and beautiful, and that was during the season. Maybe his girlfriend did it. I don't know, but he did it. You see what I mean? It was during the season. Sure. And these guys are busy, and he he sleuthed out where to put them, and I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Mm -hmm. My brother was a baseball player, and uh, in Yankee Stadium. They had a tribute to the Macho Man when he died. Mm -hmm. Because 11 years in a row, my brother read, "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house for underprivileged children, for uh, George Steinbrenner uh, in, you know, in the Tampa area. Mm -hmm. You know, he does a lot of charity. Mm -hmm. 11 years in a row, he did it at Ruth Eckert Hall in the Strauss Center, twice a year, to 10, 11 years in a row. So not only was he a great man, he was a good man too. And so, you know, I told the PR people, I said, if your job is PR, then when my, when my father died and my brother died, why did my mother get no flowers? Mm. Why did she not get a card? And they couldn't answer that. You see what I mean? And my brother is a man that allowed a king cobra snake to bite him on the arm for the entertainment of the fans. And he got a hundred. It was supposed to be devenomized, but it wasn't desalivated, I guess. And he got a hundred and three fever, and the snake died. So don't tell me he didn't give more than he got. This was Jake Snake. I do. This is what Damien. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, and it's uh, one of the most gruesome things ever seen on television. It was gruesome. Mm -hmm. You know, Lanny. Um, you know, we speak about your dad, yourself, your, your brother. I lost my mother about almost three years ago. Can you tell us a little bit about your mom? What my mom died at the age of 90. I took care of her for six years after my brother's passing. She was Jewish, very Jewish. Okay. That's the thanks I get <laughs> <laughs> for all I've done for you. <laughs> Gratitude, fat, something I don't need. I wouldn't get it anyway. Oi, Lenny. <laughs> oh, my God. So 
but she collapsed when Randy died. I mean, woo, mm. you know, and uh, so I had to be strong for her, strong for my daughter. But who's going to be strong for me? Yeah. So I had to do what was necessary. And um, June 3rd, 2017, she finally passed. But she wanted to go six years before. Mm. And my father's death, that was one year before my brother's. And um, I take a breath. He told me, he told me that uh, I was a better son to him. Mm. I was a better son than he was. And I said, how do you figure that? He says, because I couldn't get him in that goddamn oh. battle royal oh, and I said really I said dad I said dad knew that Pat Patterson didn't want to do it you know what I mean he, he said, I should have I should have beat the hell out of you know I said yeah you'd have done that you start beating people up and you're gonna be an unemployed guy that nobody wants to work with. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. But they were an arrogant group of people. You know, oddly enough, the one who gave the best advice during when this was going down and gave the most sensible advice was your father. Stay. Take the money. You know, when you probably just wanted to take your fist and ram it up Pat's, you know, well, Pat would have liked that, though. Well, the, 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 the one thing I'm getting from it, so I always <laughs> wondered, like, you guys growing up, right, you're both athletes. How do you become wrestlers? How do you not compete with each other? Obviously, there's an immense amount of respect for your older brother. I get it. Um, but what I'm getting out of this conversation early on is that you guys communicated a lot and discussed a lot. Can you describe the relationship between the two? Well, there was one time where he asked me for advice. And boy, did I feel important. Because wow. believe it or not, when he got, he signed with the St. Louis Cardinals organization in 1971. And he stayed with them uh, two years and then was unconditionally released. Uh, he was one of the, he played in Orangeburg, South Carolina, under the managerial expertise of Jimmy Pearsall. Mm -hmm. It was the mm -hmm. only time they ever let him manage mm -hmm. because he was some type of bipolar, mm -hmm. something wrong with him, you know what I mean? And you, he said, oh, yeah, he should not manage people. Wait, he, he spoke <laughs> like that while he was playing baseball too? Oh, man, one, I remember one time uh, he's a catcher and there's a bunt. And, you know, they have to call whether to throw it to first or second on a bunt. He goes, one, 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 one. And everybody was laughing. And I, But this is before he made it. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It's like, right. it was just a... So I don't know if it was uh, marijuana de fumar or whatever it was. You know, or too I much. see him being an excellent field general, baseball. Oh, that. yeah. Not, oh, know. he was a brilliant guy. Yeah. And, uh, so, and then he got released from the Cardinals and he signed on with the Cincinnati Reds organization and uh, then he got released there mm. and he signed with the White Sox as a left-handed first baseman when he's a natural right-handed thrower because he injured his arm and he, he put in the time to throw left-handed and he says, where's my justice? I've done the thing. He says, Randy, you've done the thing but you throw like a girl now. <laughs> you know, because no matter how hard you try, on the wrong hand you're going to throw funny. Yeah. So maybe that's not politically correct, but that's what they told him. What's that? Your brain won't let that happen. I'm sorry. I'm not oh, it's all right. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Like it. It's fine. Did your Did your father want his uh, his boys to become wrestlers? Just curious. He He wanted us to do anything we wanted. Okay. I wanted to be a wrestler. When did you decide that? How old were you? Oh, I had Randy decided already he wanted to be one. He knew he was going to be one if he didn't. Uh, so, so play what baseball. was the age when you decided I want to do this? I think we all knew that uh, that was a good out for us, okay. and um, we used to discuss a lot of wrestling and a lot of baseball. Okay. Tell you the truth, Randy was so focused, he never talked about wrestling while he played baseball. Huh. And after he got unconditionally released for the third time, and it was 22 years old, he never spoke of baseball again, only wrestling. And then I remember the time he came to me for advice because I guess if you want to be a great wrestler, it's divided into three categories. Your performance in the ring, your appearance, and your interviews. Okay. And Randy says, and I'll tell you what, when he first got in the ring, I couldn't believe it. Whoa, bing, 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 bing. And then, but he was too skinny. Okay. And then he started working out and it, get, 
even skinnier. Uh, until he met superstar Billy Graham, gave him some advice. Really? Yeah. Gave never, him some, advice. some magical Graham juice. <laughs> oh, no, would you please? Never mind. Never mind. Never yeah, mind. Never mind. But Billy Graham's a fantastic person. Is sure. he? Oh yes, very good guy. Okay. And he was right about everything. But um, okay. Randy oh. came to me one time, and he never. It meant a lot to me because, you know, here he is. He was so great and everything, and he says, Lanny. He says. I just can't figure out the interview. He says, I said, you're are doing... You, wait, whoa, whoa, are you serious? Yes. This is like the greatest thing you ever wound up doing. Go on. He so says, I can't figure out the interview. And I said, I said, I think you're doing great. He says, no, I'm having anxiety attacks. Wow. Okay. He says, he's breathing up and down. I said, he, says, he says, you're so good on the microphone. Can you help me? I said, yes, I can help you. Your name is Savage. Your hair is savage. Your gimmick is being a savage. You wrestle like a savage. Of all the wrestlers you've ever seen, who was the greatest savage type interview you've ever seen that made an impression on you? And he says, oh man. He says, King Curtis Iakea and Pampero Furpo. Okay. I said, well remember in 1967 and 68, when we were in Hawaii, and 50 times a day, the station would play that tag. And Furpo was an Armenian from Argentina with a pe peculiar accent that you could not possibly reproduce. But I'm going to try. Okay. You are watching number one station in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. So okay. I said, Randy, read that line. He says, oh, you are watching the number one station in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. I went. Bingo. <laughs> that sounds like money. There you go. Cha-ching. Yeah. Cha-ching. Yeah, I said, right oh, now. man, I think he's got it. I, yeah. You ever see uh, My Fair Lady? I think he's got I it. I think he's got it. I it's think gorgeous. she's got it. Well, the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. <laughs> I think she's got it. I think she's got it. Well, eventually you and Randy began to work under your father's organization. Was there a point you were trying to grow that company as your organization was battling with Jerry Lawler's promotion? Mm hmm Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you want to fill us in a little bit about ICW's uh, workings? Yeah, it was... Uh, I was drafted. I didn't enlist. It was my father and my brother's idea. Okay. And uh, I was summoned. I was going to go to Los Angeles under the um, recommendation of Rowdy... Roddy Piper. Wow. There we go. Take your hat off when we say that name. Yeah, you ain't kidding. That is a name. We will. And right? Yes. And I'll tell you what. Another guy, every bit as good as he was great, too. Every bit as good as he was great. And uh, what a wonderful person he was. Mm. And not many people go out of their way to help you like, like he did several times in his life. And uh, what I'm really proud of I was on his last podcast. Really? Really? Okay. Yeah. And uh, I had a chance to thank him. First of all, I told everybody, all his fan base, what he did for me, what he tried to do for me. And I had a chance to say, thank you, Roddy. You know, you do a lot for a lot of people, but all you get is tired. Mm. But I want you to know that I have some thanks, gratitude, respect and you know i i have to feel that because you know what in this wrestling business not everybody's going to love you it's very hard to rank but where do you put piper amongst the i mean what he's got to be in the the, the the one exclusive room the penthouse i'm assuming oh he's in the room oh yeah he's one of the first people in the room that's right yeah because he was in the first wrestlemania mm -hmm. and you got to give him you know kudos for that help build the foundation they stand on now. that's right yep Mikey. So, um, so then the ICW happened. Um, right. It's like the Pilgrims landed on Plymouth, Plymouth Rock, but Plymouth Rock landed on me. You know, <laughs> so I was like, um, I was a baby face, and I was in charge of the picture table, the souvenirs, the merchandise, all that stuff. And it was, um, I found a place to get lithographs for um, sixty dollars for a thousand. So you sell it for a dollar a piece. Right. That's 94% profit. Cha-ching. 
you know, and uh, and can then can I ask how much territory was covered by ACW? Where did oh, you... it was a never-ending territory. Okay, of miles and miles upon miles and miles and miles. Okay, okay. and uh, <laughs> we went to West Virginia, went to Missouri, all throughout Kentucky, Tennessee, everywhere, everywhere. So you were wrestling, Illinois. you were doing marketing, everything. Were you booking and writing, writing? You know the matches and no. finishes, anything like that. I was that? not allowed anywhere near the was matches. That, was okay. that, was my that father Dan and obviously? my brother fought that out. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. and uh, no, I never, I never got another. What was your relationship with Jerry Lawler at that point? Considering you guys are. Uh... Well, Randy had a thing where we'd always challenge everybody, the whoever the top guy was, uh, right. to a uh, shoot rest. You know, mm. and Randy that was his mo for his whole career, because if he put his tape in. Uh, whoever the main person was, in this case it was Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler, $10,000 to a donut for your favorite charity. You know, to put pressure on him to, mm -hmm. of course it never materialized. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was funny. Any real heat between the companies? Yes, there was heat between okay, the companies. Okay, there we go. But, but then all was forgiven, and Randy against Jerry Lawler, Drew nothing but money in every town, yeah. and they cooperated like. And then, when Vince McMahon came a calling, um, Randy stayed the extra three weeks to make sure he did his favors, fulfilled, and yeah. fulfilled his obligations. Okay. That the other guy get his hand raised so he doesn't leave the, as opposed to the Montreal screw job. Right, gotcha. You know of selfishness. Uh, how did you feel about the Montreal screw job? If I can just ask. Well, let me compare it by taking an odd approach. Okay. The last straw for Randy, what drove him out of the WWE, WWF, whatever it was at the time, was he was just the announcer. Right. And he felt his match with Ricky Steamboat was so great, but he felt like it ruined his life. I felt it ruined his life because he was OCD about trying to have a better match than that, and he couldn't. And the reason he couldn't is because 50% of that match was because of Ricky the Dragon yeah, Steamboat. right, sure, exactly. Sure, and I'm sorry, sure. without a great opponent. Sure. Not that the other opponents weren't great. Right. But Ricky, this was a special... Ricky Steamboat was a phenomenal oh. babyface athlete Yes. with unparalleled skills. Yes. And, you know, if yeah. you can't admit that, you yeah. need to go back and watch the video, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So um, he kept trying to top that match, and he never could. And it just frustrated him that he couldn't do it. So he's announcing, and he's starting to realize that Shawn Michaels is emerging as the greatest talent in the WWE, mm -hmm. whatever it was. At the time, but getting to be close to being WWE. Go on. So... He called me up at like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. I don't remember what it was. Hello, this is Randy. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was Vince. Go on. Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all. The mistake in that voice. <laughs> he says, I need you to do something. Because I had a computer with one of those, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've got mail, you know. <laughs> Back in the old ancient hey, I days? I still use AOL. Holy Quiet 20 down. years ago, Batman. Go on. Yeah, this is back in the old days. Yeah. I need to find find me one of those champagne bottles that you can uh, break over somebody's head. And um, and I think, I think I found something in Van Nuys, California, those pretend champagne bottles that are breakaway, you know, that they yeah. use in um, whatever vaudeville or movies or stage plays or whatever. Yeah, props, Boom. yeah. Prop. Because if you do it with a real bottle, yeah, you're going to kill somebody. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a murder weapon right there. Right. So. Or bad pizza. He says, find it, and if, but don't pull the trigger. Don't buy it yet. Just find out where it is. So if we buy it, we got to do it in a hurry. So he had a two-year plan. Him and Shawn Michaels, they were going to, he was going to drink some champagne to Shawn Michaels' career, and they would put their glasses together, say cheers. I like where this is going. And then he was going to take the bottle <laughs> and break it over Shawn's head. That would be great. Little, little, that would be great. 
the little red stuff <sighs> coming out, and then um, and then it was going to be the Hatfields and the McCoys, the feud mm. every week. Something would happen. Something would happen. I'm going to get even with you for what you did for me. Boom! I'm going to get even with you for what you did with me. He had it all lined up. He thought he was a meticulous man. He thought mm-hmm. him. He was brilliant. And he had a sense of what the people wanted for entertainment. Mm-hmm. So he, did, he went through all this thing, and it was going to culminate at WrestleMania, which is going to be Shawn Michaels' hair against Randy's career. If Randy loses, he retires to the announcing table. If Shawn Michaels loses, Randy gets to shave his head in the middle of the ring. Okay. That's fun. Yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely. I'm into it. Yeah. Well, Randy was going to... Put him over, lose right in the middle, okay, and go right to the announcing booth. Okay, this is not like Bret Hart, who is going, who doesn't care who wins as long as it's him. Why? Right. You know, okay. and we say uh, you're a big Bret Hart fan. No, I'm. A, I am. A, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I am a big Bret Hart fan. Fair. Okay. I am. A, he's. Hey, I don't knock success. He's a better man than me. He's great. He's good. He's fantastic, and he's a nice person. Mm-hmm. But he was thinking more of Bret Hart than he was the WWE. Okay, can we yeah, be fair? Sure. Absolutely. And my brother that way. and my uh, brother right. was thinking about don't forget, he lost to Ricky Steamboat right in the middle. Right. Which annoyed me, but go on. But especially hey, George Steele interfering. You know, you know what's funny what you're saying here though? You've got the Hart family, right? Which is a great wrestling family, and the Poffo family, and it seems like the Poffo family understands about doing the honors where the Hart family is more about their branding and maybe more new age wrestling. Is that fair to say? I I think it's, if I understood what you said, it'd be even fairer. Okay, so let's right, try this again. Right. So the Hart family is about themselves and about taking care of their brand where the Poffo family is about the taking business. care of the business. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm like getting at. Well, Especially if Macho was willing to do the right Randy, thing by Sean, and Brett was like, no. Randy's <laughs> version of selfishness was that he had his greatest match at his final match. You see what I mean? Sure. Mm-hmm. That he went out with a bang. Right. And who but, wouldn't want to do that? You right? know what I mean? Yeah. And then have people say, well, which match was better, his match with Steamboat or right. his match with Shawn Michaels? Right. right. But Pat Patterson told him. Oh, here we go with him again. Go on. <laughs> tell me, tell says, me. Randy, um... Thank you. Uh, very good. But hold on, that's some music. Good. Well, uh, that was that was the band that just walked by. You were said AOL. Go ahead. I think that was a ghost. Yeah. At least okay. they were in tune. Go on. He says, uh, Randy, that's great, but we're having a youth movement, and the best thing you could do is hang on to the microphone. We're having a youth movement. Yes, and so Randy says, "Ooh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was elderly." <laughs> But I think I'll get a second opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, he called up the WCW. Okay. And uh, he just, and he ins- he insisted that he doesn't want to do any announcing. He wants to go in the ring. Right. And with a chip on his shoulder, he tried to prove every night right. that he was a young man. Right. Mm. So let me ask you: You're both in the organization at the same time. Are you still there while this is going no. on? Okay. I so was you, you've left. So here's a question for you. Whether one of you are having problem, you're wrestling in the same organization and you, you get let go or he's having trouble, how do you guys keep your emotions? I understand it's it's business, but you seem very close. How, how did you keep your emotions when you felt something was being you know unjust? I always kept my emotions, but my pillow knows the truth. So Are you, whatever. A, are you a pillow biter? <laughs> hey, did you, did you see... <laughs> Did you see Corky? You talking about Corky? Yeah, a little bit. Did you you saw the movie? Yeah. I'm going to bite my pillow. That's what I'm going to (laughs) do. Because you people are bastard people. You give me nothing. What can I do with nothing? Am I right? That that was the movie. That is the movie. I love that movie. Man, I'm thinking that you like movies. It was Waiting for Guffman. Waiting for Mr. Guffman. Yes. Is the name of the movie? Yeah, I think you're yeah. 100%. There you go. So anyway. Give him a minute. He'll give you the release date. <laughs> no. You give, him, you give him a minute. He probably will. Oh, listen. That was just a particularly great movie. Okay. Okay. And um, so my point is, if I had a point, <laughs> okay. um, the only thing that counts is what the bank teller counts. Now, in my life, I had to um, have a defecation sandwich, you know, eat it or starve. 
Um, the money was good. Um, sandwich. Well, the money was good. So uh, I remember before WrestleMania three. Okay. I'm in the Joe Lewis Arena. They're going to do an NBC Saturday Night's Main Event. I'm on the dark match. Now, when I was a boy, dreaming of fame and glory, did I dream of being on the dark match? That's what they use to sound check, boom, 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 mm -hmm. lighting, kick, 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 you know, check and see uh, if everything's good. Oh, number 22 is off. Move it. Okay, fine. They're using me to move their uh, and check for focus. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't really what I wanted to do with my life. Okay. But that's what I was sent to do and I was going to do it. Not everybody liked me, but I'll tell you, there was one guy that did like me. Pat Patterson? He liked everybody. But not that way. God, I'm throwing you off, man. Come on. <laughs> Hang in there with me. Hang in there with me. Oh Gorilla God, Monsoon. So pink. Monsoon liked Gorilla. you. That's he an important him. guy to like you. Yeah. He says, Leaping oh, yeah. Lanny. Where's Leaping Lanny? I want to see Leaping Lanny. I said, right here. And he grabs me and pulls me into the broom closet and has his way with me. Just here. <laughs> no. He wow. could have, though. Wow. He could have. But he says, Lanny, <laughs> I just had a big production meeting with Dick Ebersol. Pat Patterson, um, Vince McMahon, all the people of NBC. And, you know, here's the problem. Andre the Giant is the biggest star of the 70s, but he's the biggest hero of the 70s and 80s. We put him with Bobby Heenan, but we really want to make him hot as a heel before his match with Hogan at Pontiac Silverdome. He says... Have you ever done a blade job? I said, I worked in Tennessee. He said, I repeat, have you ever done a blade job? How many have you done? So I told a little lie. 300. <laughs> and a actually, lie? Actually, it was 30. Okay. And I, I have a, it's against my religion to uh, cut myself with a razor blade. Okay. It's against my religion. But it, I did it when I asked, and I did it when necessary. And I didn't ever get good at it for on purpose. I didn't ever get good at it. So it was important to them that you did it enough so it looked legitimate, right? Is that that's what I'm getting well, at? Well, you should have seen people coming up to me. <laughs> Dick Ebersaw says, Lanny, you're going to bleed well for us, aren't you? <laughs> oh, boy. We've wow. never had blood Business. before on NBC. You're going to do it for us, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. I will do my best. <laughs> oh, that's good because it's very important to us. So bleed right. Vince McMahon comes up and says, hello, pal. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello, pal. He says, you got a big job to do. I said, yes, sir. I know this. Randy comes up to me. Need any advice? Mm -hmm. I said, no, I think I've got it. So if you've seen the video. I think I know what's about to happen here. I did a pretty good job. Mm. But I had trouble at the end getting the blood to stop. Mm -hmm. So now I've got a towel over my head trying to get, and I got three concerned people, Rene Goulet, Rick Martel, Randy Macho Man Savage, and me, the only ones that give a damn if I bleed to death. <laughs> so I got this thing over my, and nobody thanks me. Nobody comes up and says, how are you doing? and Vince were having a steak. They were, you know. And guess, guess what my reward was? Go ahead. And the Pontiac Silverdome, yours truly played the role oh boy. of Dennis Stamp. I'm not booked. Yeah, that's right. So, is this the thanks I get? Wow. So, I said, well, in a far, as a farmer would say, I'm sucking hind tit on the sow here. So, I said, I think I'll just, the only thing that counts is what the bank teller counts. The only thing that counts is what the bank teller counts. Right. And I kept my job. Other people lost their job. I stayed, I stayed, I stayed, sucking the hind tit on the sow. <laughs> Two years later, I'm against Hulk Hogan. Side nice main event. And, you know, all's well that ends well. Uh, let's clarify this. He's victorious against Hulk Hogan on Saturday night's great main match. event on top we're gonna, of it. We're going to get that in a minute. Match. I want to back up a little bit. Um, 
I don't want to overlook the fact that uh, Miss Elizabeth started in your father's organization too, correct? Mm -hmm. Can you speak about her and some memories or thoughts on how that came about, how she started? Yes, uh, we used to work out in Lexington, Kentucky at a gym called Sinte Sports Center at C-I-N-T-H-E. I think they were Indonesian uh, karate people. And they had a magnificent facility. And the weights and the extra Nautilus and weights, free weights, Cecil Blankenship was Mr. Kentucky. He he was in there and everybody was, they had karate, they had bodybuilding, they had weightlifting, they had it all. And Elizabeth Hewlett was um, in the mornings, the person that was the reception desk. First person you see as you walk in the door. Okay. And macho man uh, had to uh, ask her out on a date. And How quickly did those two click, by the way, Macho and Liz? Was it like right away? Or? Like uh, like a Vita Duarte and Juan Perón. Okay. Okay, if okay. you ever seen gotcha. Don't Cry for Me, Argentina. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to do the whole thing? Sure, go ahead. No, 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 been no, immortal. no, 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 the truth is I never left you, not in my wild days, my mad existence. I kept my promise, don't keep your distance. There you go. Oh, I, I still remember it. that commercial <laughs> back in the day. When you know, I'm not, I'm not bragging, but you know, I met some fantastic people in my life. Sure. And uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber is the guy that beat out this guy. And it was Marvin Hamlish. So... Marvin Hamler, she was one singular sensation. Every little step she takes, da 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 da. da. She, he wrote a chorus line. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so at the time, I was drinking out of the same cup with my wife. We were in Madison Square Garden. I was early. I said, "Would you meet my wife?" And we had, you know, my daughter had a babysitter, and she came up. This is Marvin Hamler. Oh my God! Oh, you know, and we've seen everything, you know. Um, Memory like the color of my mind. Anyway, all the you go Wikipedia. This guy, his yeah, resume he's is long. Yeah, out one thing after another. So. And and he says, Lanny, do you think the other wrestlers will sign my book? And I said, What do you care? You're Marvin Hamlish. He says, What do you mean? You're better than they are. Oh no, I'm nothing. Nothing. <laughs> wow. Many years after you, hundred years after you're dead, they're going to be humming you. You know, so there he is. So anyway, very nice man, big resume, very low ego. So where were we uh, were talking well, about? Well, I wanted to ask you, when your brother got the call to go to WWE, what were your feelings about that? How did your dad feel when Randy got the call? And uh, how long before you got the call? Were you hoping you'd get the call quick? or? Um, what happened is he was on the phone with George Scott, who was the booker at the time. George Scott, okay. And he says... Yeah, it looks like my brother was going to uh, Vern Gagne, but they'll just eat him alive if he goes there and I go here. He says, is there any room for him? He says, well, they're not on top. He says, well, is it a heel or a baby face? He says, I'll check. You want to be a heel or a baby face, but you can't go in on top. I said, well, I'll take a baby face then. So wait, why did he think you'd get ate up by the AWA? Like, what, what, yeah. what was that thought process? Because it was, uh, it was, they were shooting with real bullets by then, you know, there were desperate people do desperate things. Vince was winning, and they were just counting the bodies. Everybody was going out of business. Mm -hmm. It was obvious that the momentum belonged to... To Vince. Yes. Right. Okay. And, you know, another thing that Vern did wrong, tactically, if they're invading your area, you should hold your home base. Instead, he went out to the Meadowlands and... Um, he should have stayed in Minnesota and just bunkered down. He would have lost anyway, but it would have taken longer. Right. Did your your father's organization? Did that? Uh, did Vince eat up that organization too? Or no, um, it was dying of stagnation anyway. We did very good for several years, but we just didn't have enough talent coming in and out to compete with everybody. Mm. You know, it's like it gets stale. The same guys against the same guys always. You need to have new faces come in. Old faces remain, new ones coming in, like right. a nucleus of the old, and and the new people get cast athwart into the abyss tide. That's just the way it works if you're going to succeed at long term. So let's talk about how you hang in there, 
and then you kind of go on a little bit of a hiatus for right, and then you come back with this, uh, I don't know, new body. Does anybody have any bottled water? Okay, that can be arranged. Okay, thank you. Um, new so, body? You, so you come, you, you come, you come back to the WWE with like you disappear for like maybe two months. Is that fair to say? And you come in with the new gimmick and the new body. Uh, Are we talking the frisbees and the poetry? No, he's no, talking we're about talking the, about the genius. About the he's genius. talking about steroids. Well, before well, we get to that, though, how about the frisbees and the poetry? Who came up with that? Um, thank you, sir. If we may. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh boy, you. did I need that? Thank you. There you go. Okay. Actually, Al Costello came up with it. Okay. I was just a boy in the audience watching the fabulous kangaroos, Roy Hefferman, Red Berry is the manager, Al Costello, and they used to throw, they used to bring boomerangs that were right. carved yeah. by Aborigines, mm. but you can't throw those, They're de- they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to half the crowd. <laughs> so they made out of, out of some type of uh, very heavy uh, paper or cardboard, I don't know pressed cardboard I guess they made uh, like a boomerang type of design with picture of Hefferman and Costello and information about very interesting really about Australia about the tag team of the fabulous kangaroos it was quite a keepsake they used to throw these around fans used to lunge for them oh sure I was one of those fans there you go my brother Mark. elbowed me in the face and got, well, got one <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, so anyway but we wound up with it Together we wound up with one of them. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so anyway, um, so I was thinking, I was a guest on TNT, and I knew that if I was boring, they would never invite me back. So I decided to stack the deck in my favor by writing a poem for TNT, and I wore, I wore my suit of theatrical armor, mm. which I had bought previously in the hopes of trying to figure out a gimmick that makes money you know because i'm always in search of that hell i'm going to be 64 years old if i find a gimmick now i'll get it you know what i mean and uh so i go on the tnt with vince mcmahon remember the show yeah mm-hmm. okay i know sure. you're too young to remember are you talking tuesday night times? we're too young to remember we are too are you young, can, you're brother. out of your mind we, we were right there we're that young. as a matter of fact could you talk a little louder i'm having a hard time hearing with my wait a minute so <laughs> if i'm getting this they're just inviting you on and you're just you're just doing this on your own so i yeah i dress wow i figure i played Good my, improv then Good i played job. my aces okay and i went um let's see what that was that poem i did um Dude, if you remember this poem from he back probably then, will. He I'm going to give you see. kudos. It was a long time ago, and it was, um, okay. I hear the wires cracking. Oh, boy, this is like. Uh, Don't corner yourself now. No, no one's perfect except Mr. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can hear him right now. This is not a perfect belt, and it's all somehow rye waste. <laughs> oh, I love when you guys trash the belt. That oh, was yeah. fantastic. So, go, it go, so anyway, it goes. Um, oh boy! Reach harder. Don't get it. Um, when do you want to ask him about the new body? Yeah, well, I, let's bounce to that. Right? I took steroids. So, well, that that's really not. <laughs> so you, you did stop blocking and tell the truth. You, <laughs> You disappear for a little bit, right? Yes, and then and you, do you, now do they tell they, do they, you they say you came do back, they say Lanny, we want you to have a new gimmick, or you're like, I'm coming back with this new gimmick. Yeah, like what? And how do we get from the first piece to the genius? And and you know? was was it the pressure that you're like, look, I want to be a main eventer, and I got it, I got to get jacked up. There you go. I decided that yes, and I'll tell you what, I am not proud of it, but I don't want to lie about it because I want to be able to look you in the eye and say. Please don't. I got away with it, but you may not. Right. Right. Okay. And I think I got away with it. Oh, you know, you know what I mean? I don't know what long-term effect it had. But I was on it for five months. Um, I why, had did a, you, why did you do it? Was the pressure too much for you? Or, I mean, was there a I lot of pressure? Sick and of how being, rampant was this usage? I knew this was the opportunity. It wasn't illegal yet. Okay. It was the opportunity of a lifetime. I was tired of being a jabroni. Okay. I wanted to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. This was my chance. Mm-hmm. And thanks to Hulk Hogan, it all came through for me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, when I took my shirt off in the locker room, everybody says, holy shit. You know, and I course, said, holy shit. Yeah, I remember man. when you came back. Yeah. I said, holy shit. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, yeah, they said that. But I was still in the locker room with the ultimate warrior. You know what I mean? Right. Warlord, barbarian. <laughs> holy balloon in other words, Batman. In other words, <laughs> all I got was a participation trophy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's hilarious. You could have coasted down one of warrior's veins. Oh, you, oh my you, God. Here, here's a question that bothers Seriously. me a lot. It seems like in the professional wrestling world... Um, there's a not a badge of honor, but it's okay to do cocaine, illegal drugs, but use this of steroids. Everybody yeah, they, seems like, yeah, they go wild. oh, I don't, you know, oh, I, I never really else. used it. I don't. It's I, true. What's the embarrassment of using steroids? Is it because I, I almost I, took the whole business down? That there's this yeah. like, no, no, not me. It was him. Because we've noticed that there's that paranoia. Like the, if, you're not afraid to admit it, and good for you. But most people. But like, again, I don't even. Guy, I don't even me? understand why anyone would be afraid to admit. I don't know right? either. Maybe because it almost took. Vince well, the to reason I want to say the reason I want to admit it is because I had a good talk with myself, and I said, "Self, if I can help one person make a better decision than I made, right? Because I put wealth and fame okay. above health. Nothing's more important than health." And, you know, in this business, you know, people, 99% of everybody I meet is all about pleasure, power, and possession. I'm about health, wealth, and freedom. <laughs> Look Sorry. at this guy over here. I'm with you. And health comes first. Right. What do you have without health? Nothing. Right. Would you take a billion dollars in cancer? I don't think so. Would you give up a billion dollars to cure your cancer? Yes. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, life is not fair. You can do everything right and still pay. Mm. The answer may be obvious, but what is it like for you emotionally when you hear of these deaths, like one after another? Some of these are your friends, I'm sure, past co-workers. And- I just thought of the poem. Oh, hit, hit it. Hit it. Look back through the annals of history and the wrestling hall of fame. Men from all nations with courage to spare who struggled to carve out a name. Now compare these high standards of valor to those chivalrous knights of yore. With bravery staunches their armor, their glory both legend and lore. My medieval connection with wrestling relives that magnificent past. Though mindless skeptics may snicker and scoff, the winner is he who laughs last. Alive with the love of wrestling, I appear on TNT. Between Vince and awful Alfred, the hottest show on TV. I'm not your average wrestler, but I wouldn't want to be. I never scream or kiss my arms. I'm happy just being me. I call myself Leaping Lanny. I validate what I say to every single wrestling fan who's watching USA. Yes, I believe in miracles, as God has blessed this great land. I believe the referee will soon be raising my hand. And then after we go to commercial black. Hold on, I gotta applaud that (laughs) man, holy cow. After we go to commercial black, Vince McMahon leans over and says, Lanny, that was fantastic. uh, Every match from now on, Every time you're on TV, you do a poem before every match. And, and I said, so I tried to be blasé about it, but the 10-year-old boy inside went, yes, yes, I got sure. a gimmick. So, look, so, 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 so like, awesome. how long does it take you to write these poems? Are they coming right straight well, to your head? Here's the thing. They didn't know how long it took me. And Chief J. Strongbow was in charge of who you wrestled at TV. He put it on the chalkboard. And so politely, I go up to him so politely with my people skills. <laughs> and I said, I said, you know, I've been here like all day. Um, if you would tell me who I'm going to wrestle, it'll help me write a better poem. And he goes. <laughs> Chief J. <laughs> that's a, he that's says, a puss. <laughs> I hate your gimmick. Nice. Thank you. The Italian Indian is mouthing off. Go on. Yeah, the uh, on, Eliz- Chief, the Chief Elizabeth Jerk. the Go Elizabeth on. Warren of Indians. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. Wait a minute. Something's about to come flying from the back of the room. So, Here we go. Oh. Okay. So what are you, no, what are you, wait a minute. <laughs> Evan Ginsburg and I do not let politics interfere with our friendship this at is, all. You are one of his five thousand friends. This is no, true. Listen, uh, this is true. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen. Evan Ginsburg never lied to me, and I promise 
I promised myself never to lie to him. There you go. I might lie to you guys, but oh, I well, won't. Well, that's okay. Wow, that's, we resemble that's okay. That, we resemble that remark. Yeah. Well, wow. you may want to okay. give a poem for Evan at some point. Or, or for us. Or about a pizza. Well, Can you give me one about, about a pizza? A pizza. It, it'll have to rhyme with mensch because that's what he is. This pizza is bad. It made me quiver. Holy shit, it just wrecked my liver. What do you think? <laughs> well, that's pretty, I think that's pretty, like pretty good. good. This is I a new like poet. That. What? What's the problem? That's no, pretty I'm not, good. I'm not him. Okay. So, anyway, um, <laughs> so what I did, since I knew I wasn't going to get any cooperation from the chief. So, okay. wait a minute. He ate your gimmick, so he's basically saying, I'm not going to tell you who you're wrestling. He's not going to tell me who I'm wrestling. Wow. Okay. So. What a dick. Yes. Go on. What a dick. What a dick. Or in the shower, where's his dick? You know. <laughs> or Sean Penn. You dick. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. So anyway, what my point is, <laughs> I knew I wasn't, and I didn't want to stooge on him to Vince McMahon. Okay. And I didn't want to tell my brother. Randy. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Randy would have flipped. Yeah, I don't want him to flip. He, he has enough that. troubles. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, we didn't have what you call laptops. So I went to the thrift store, got a 49% spiral notebook, and a pen. Instant laptop. And I started writing poetry that is generic okay. about certain opponents I might get. Okay. In other words, I had it all, and I said, and then the greatest thing was, two minutes before the match, Strombo says, we need a partner for Corporal Kirshner. Lanny, get in there. <laughs> Against oh, Nikolai and the Sheik. Nice. Okay. So, and I got to do a poem, but I got two minutes. But what they don't know is, I had already written one for them. Awesome. So I said, if Volkov comes from Russia and the Sheik comes from Iran, I have a question on the minds of every single fan. Every time your mouth is open, you must put our country down. If you hate us all so much, then tell us why you're still around. There's so many boats and planes that leave our country every day, and I gladly buy two tickets just as long as they're one way. Because a lot of people fought and died to keep our country free, and we're sick of seeing both your ugly faces on TV. <laughs> so with Freddie Blassie at your side, just step into the ring and salute your native homelands as the Russian starts to sing. And, the, and when the bell is sounded and the match is underway, some American inferior might kick your big red A. Wow. <laughs> That's a great That's another one. Awesome. I wonder. So anyway, one of my favorite people, okay, in the WWF, WWE, whatever. Mm -hmm. Bruce Pritchard. Okay. He says he he sees me in Chicago and he says, Lanny, in four days you're going to be on the Brother Love Show. Oh, that was the best. And we're going to have you're going to make me the. The doctor of love and everything. <laughs> and uh, I don't even remember this one, but it was, um, it was, re I had a chance to make a, go on YouTube and look up Brother Love, the genius. Mm -hmm. And people still remember that. And I, that was, I think that was the moment that Hulk Hogan noticed me okay. to decide to work with me. You know, that I, and I, I had a chance to do uh, his podcast, and I had the chance to see him about a month ago, um, Brother Love, mm -hmm. Bruce Pritchard. Mm -hmm. and, um, his podcast is excellent. Mike, Mike turned me on to his You better podcast. believe it. Excellent. It's you a better huge, believe it. great excellent. podcast. And he's an excellent person. Okay. And I said, you know, wrestlers come and go, and we've done a lot of stuff, and nobody remembers anybody because it's all a bunch of scrambled eggs. But people still come up to me, and they remember the time I was on the Brother Love Show. And thank you for giving me four days to come up with a poem instead of handcuffing me mm. and doing mm -hmm. it that day. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if I put some time into it, I'm going to do a better job. Sure. You know, because else. it's, um, it was, I just, and he, and he really... It was heartfelt. I, I think we were on the same. Was this the point that you realized that the character was over with the crowd? Because if I can say so, your character—the thing that I found most effective about it was, is, as a as a heel, the genius was incredibly irritating. You wanted to choke him. Oh, I want to kill this guy! And like when you beat Hogan, we literally called each other like he just beat Hogan. We were so what an injustice! <laughs> you know? so, yeah, it was. Might uh, have been the worst day of my life. 
I was rough. It I was tough. You beat Hogan. I was like, you beat Hogan. I was furious. Like, I know. I beat Hogan. <laughs> did, did you cry at that? I, I might have. It was close. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Yeah, it was not like you and Hogan. Who, who decided to put you, who decided but, to put you yeah. with Kurt Henning? And you know, here's I, a tough question for you though. What Matt did you know? Was? Kurt had problems, and did you ever try to help him with his problems? Yeah, were you aware of his demons? If he, you know. Okay, who put me with him? I don't know. Really. I don't know. Really? I just all, all of a sudden I'm with Kurt Henning. You guys were magic right. together. Okay. And uh, I knew better than to question it. Okay. But believe it or not. Were you happy about hearing that? I was so delighted. Yeah. I thought you'd be psyched about that. Here's, here's something nobody knows. Okay. When Kurt Henning first came to the WWF, um, I was his bitch. What? Describe this being Kurt Henning's bitch. I was wrestling him in every town. Okay. And he would win, 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 win in every town, <laughs> 20 towns in a row. Aye. But he never hurt me. Okay. He always made me look good. And he was always decisive at the end with his finish. And Randy said, man, you're having great matches with Kurt Henning. How was he to work with? I said, smooth as silk. Were you able to, were you learning when, like, working with a guy like that? No, I was listening and okay. obeying. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I was listening and obeying. All okay. I was going to, see, I was there to, to enhance him. Okay. And um, he was such a gentleman, he would always thank me. Not everybody did. Some didn't. Mm. You know, if I could wrestle Kurt Henning, as Leaping Lanny, if I could wrestle Kurt Henning and lose... Terry Funk and lose, Harley Race and lose, um, Bob Orton Jr. and lose. I would look better and be more popular than if I had defeated Barry Horowitz. Right, I understand. Because Barry Horowitz was a good wrestler, but he didn't understand how to get heat or even that he should get heat. Okay. When I was the genius, I used to get what we call cheap heat. Oh, yeah. Cheap heat. Oh, yeah. And to me, cheap heat was good enough. Sure. You know, it's like... Very effective heat. Yeah, like... Uh, <laughs> Very effective. And I th I enjoyed the genius character, and I miss it a lot. Can I ask who you had... I did catch the middle finger before to those who were not kind or not upfront with you. Who do you have heat with in the business during your time you're run with? Is anybody really is a real prick and deserves to be called out here? You got anybody? There's got to be someone deserves the King Jackass title. Okay, let me ignore your question and go back to Pat Patterson. Back to King Jackass. You were saying no, no, listen. He was, in 1967, I had a chance to be in Cow Palace in San Francisco. Okay. 12 years old. My brother was 14. My father was there for three weeks for Roy Shires. Then we went to Hawaii. I saw Ray Stevens and Pat Patterson against... Um, Pedro Morales and Pepper Gomez. Mm -hmm. I promise you, for any money, you can't get more entertainment ever in the history of wrestling. I went, bing, 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 bing. How much can these fans take? You know, it's like... So Pat was influential. Pat, I said some bad things about Pat, and I meant them. Understood. But I never said he couldn't work. Okay. And I'd never said he didn't have a great brain for this business. Right? Sure, sure. So don't ever get the sure. impression that I'm going to let my dislike for him. Fair. Don't take away everything from the guy. Right. I don't knock success. Right. And Vince McMahon wouldn't have had him in that position right. if he wasn't worthy of it. Because right. Vince McMahon, well, here's, here's Vince McMahon's, this is his M.O. Like... Here's some beautiful lights in this studio, right? Um, you must have a lighting man. Well, Vince McMahon had several lighting men at every production. And he hired only the finest lighting men in the world. And there was a foreman to make sure of this. You know, an, an expert in a lighting team. And he would overpay them so they didn't want to leave. And then he would stress them out so they would give even more of their best. And that was, that's Vince's M.O. He overpays you so you don't want to leave. He stresses you out so he gets the most out of you. And then when your brother dies, he doesn't send flowers. Okay? Now, I don't know. You see what I mean? 
Um, do you think? Do, but do you, he, do you think, <laughs> wait, but no, but disturbedly. Look, I'm not. He's, I, he's I don't. You, he's done with you. That's yeah. that's. And I'm wondering if that's his way that. of controlling his business. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not. You know what I mean? But is it is it maybe someone's way of controlling? You know, not getting too close to the boys, not making sure he doesn't care enough. I don't know, but he should have sent flowers. Absolutely, absolutely. To my mother. Yeah. When if Joey Votto can do it, he oh, can do it. Yeah. And that was during the season. Sure. So and we got flowers from everybody, and we got. You know that went worldwide when Macho Man died. That was huge. I'm not sure if you filled this in for us, so I'm going to ask: What exactly was the parting, if I can ask, between Vince and and Randy? How did that end? As far as Randy basically was like, you know, he wanted him to just stay hey, the announcer. He, he wanted to wrestle, I mean, right? Was yeah. there any final conversation you could share with us or anything like, you know, Randy, I'm the, out of here? I wasn't or, there, but he said, well, if you're having a youth movement, I'll get a second opinion. Go. Right, and that was basically and he got uh, a second that opinion. was the last conversation. Turned wow. out that uh, Eric Bischoff didn't think he was too old. Okay. But then, a couple years later, he got some three knee surgeries in a row, mm. which never did take. Mm. And, uh, you know, with... A man as physical as Randy Stahl was, mm. um, I'm afraid that he became too old. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're as you're as young as your knees. Right. You know what? You know what? I don't understand. I'm thinking like Randy's a huge player in the game. You're a very big player in the game. You're his brother, and I would almost think that they would shit a brick messing around with you. You know, you know, we're talking about losing your job. It's like, really, all you had to do is complain to somebody, and I think someone would have lost their job, right? You would think, but yeah. you know what? I mean, uh, that's some it balls, doesn't sound right? Like you, you ever tried to pull any uh, cards on other people? Like, hey, I'm Randy's brother. I don't get that vibe from you at all. I'm doing it now. Well, yeah. doing it I'm for wearing the ring. Positive reasons. I'm wearing the ring, and the reason I'm wearing the ring is because if anybody remembers my name. It'll be because of his. Mm. And when I take off this ring, see, don't forget, I've got some guilt feelings because I went against Randy's wishes. Mm -hmm. I put him in the Hall of Fame, you know, and I, uh, he enjoyed not being in the Hall of Fame. He only wanted to go in the Hall of Fame as a member of the Popo family. Hey, I tried in 2012. John Laurinaitis called me on the phone, asked how I felt about Randy going in the Hall of Fame posthumously. Mm -hmm. And I said Randy's wishes were... That we go Randy, Lanny, and Angelo in the Hall of Fame. And he got the idea because the Von Erics were put in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. He says, the Von Erics? What the blank is Chris doing in the Hall of Fame? He says, what did he ever do except shoot himself in the head while his mother was alive? Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about it, man, how can you do that while your mother's alive? Yeah. You know what I mean? Aren't you afraid you might hurt her? You see what I mean? Do you ever consider? That's a selfish move. Sure. Why don't you do it when Fair. your mother's not alive? You see, anyway, people are, kill themselves. That's a selfish thing. Um, so anyway, he says, then he started to tease me. Lanny, you're better than Chris. Even you. You know? <laughs> so, Randy, so I said, so I put the claw on him. You know? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Only That's Baron my gimmick. Von That's my gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Laddie, you seem like you have a lot of respect for Hulk Hogan. Uh, again, as wrestling fans and fans of you we and fans Hogan. of your brother. What was the problem between Hogan and your brother? They seem like have had this on and off relationship. What really, was it just com competition? Or was there something that went on that people just are unaware of? Well, I love my brother and I love Hulk Hogan. Both of them have helped me so much. I've also got Dr. Wayne Dyer. There's no such thing as a justified resentment. I'll say that the person who threw gasoline on the fire was a shock jock in Tampa named Bubba. Bubba yeah. Love Gun. A love sponge. Love yeah. yeah. yeah I wasn't going to mention his name, but, Sorry. Yeah. but you know, Fuck him. Um, anyway. he's on the downhill slalom Good. thanks to karma. Good. And um, Enjoy the ride. He used to say terrible things about not just Randy, but all of us. Yeah. And he doesn't even know me, yeah. or my dad, or my mom. But, you know, there's no limit to what he's going to say. Wow. We know somebody like that. Go on. A guy on the microphone, you can't yeah. stop him, yeah. you know. So, whatever. Um, the thing is, 
it all got rectified at the end. I think um, Randy had a big list of uh, a, a verb and a pronoun people, you know, yeah. FY. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And a big FY list. And um, he went around making peace with everybody, and on the top of the list was Hulk Hogan. Okay. Wow. Okay. And they, they parted friends. Good. I'm proud to say. Thank it. God. That's great. But Good. in my case, Randy came to me with that "Be a Man Hulk," "Be a Man Hulk." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he wanted me to write a rap tune against Hulk Hulk Hogan. I said, Randy, this I cannot do. Mm. Because that thing on NBC he did for me, mm-hmm. I can't do that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't do it ever. That was the greatest program. Because yeah. you're looking at That's a jabroni awesome. that he made into star, a star for a star, four man. months. Yeah. I was, you know, I've been, yeah. I've had 27 appearances in Madison Square Garden, twice on the main event. There you go. That's like uh, 180, uh, 184 less than Bruno. Yeah, but yeah, still, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know that's what I mean. Great. No, it's great. Uh, I'm, I'm appreciative. I have to ask, with everything that's gone down with, gone down with Hulk Hogan. Is Hulk Hogan a racist? What is this? Absolutely not. Thank you. Could you please elaborate on how you feel about what happened and how he was bagged and all this, this BS? Okay. I aspire to be half the humanitarian Hulk Hogan is. Half. If I could be half the humanitarian Hulk Hogan is, I'm going to get a Nobel Prize. Okay. First of all, he's a human being. He was being torn apart at the seams. He was, going, he was trying to keep his marriage together. He was trying to keep his son out of prison. Mm, mm. He had a lot of problems at the time. Can't you see that? Mm. And I think he was looking longingly at the wrong end of a magnum too. Mm. You know, that's it's an easy way out. So oh, man. I've seen him do more. Between my brother and him, They have nobody's done more to help those less fortunate, regardless of color, regardless of anything. Do you think he'll come back from this? Will the, will, the, will the public forgive him? Do you see him coming back? The public has already forgiven him. I you know, agree with this. I yeah, it's just, it's just the uh, corporate sponsors and stockholders. <laughs> and <Snickers. members. laughs> Yes. All right, we're coming, we're coming close to the end. Okay. Uh, I got to hit you with the most important question tonight, and I want you to really oh, no. focus on no, this, okay? Go. Oh, boy. Go ahead. Is Alexa Bliss the greatest professional wrestler of all time? How did I know? You always got to get Alexa Bliss, and he probably doesn't even... Okay. Uh, and I, wa- I want you to think about what you're about to say. This is very yeah, important. Yeah, it starts with an N and ends with an O. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what an asshole. Okay. What an Thank asshole. You, you know, okay, try. do me a favor. <laughs> I'm going to say that she's a fantastic champion and a great wrestler. Yes. Yeah, yes. Is. However, we agree with that. go on YouTube. Okay. There's a match between Kenny Omega... Yeah, baby. And... Okada? Um, actually, it's um, that too. Yeah. Um, Chris Jericho. Yes, that was awesome too. Now here's Chris Jericho in the twilight of his career. Yes, great match. Kenny Omega coming up. Yes. They great meet match. in the middle like sure Benjamin did. Button. Yep. Uh, and. It's a great match. You know the difference between objective and subjective? Absolutely. Okay, if it's a hundred yard dash, I can prove who's the fastest. Whether I love you or hate your guts, whoever's fastest. Is the fastest. Sure. That's right. End result. Okay. However, in wrestling or diving, even if the Romanian judge gives you a bad score, you lose. I don't care who you are. So, <laughs> in <laughs> I it's, love it. Right. Right. It's, a, it's a matter of opinion whether Alexa Bliss is the best. Right. But I'll tell you what. The very fact, the very fact that you're even offering her as as a question for me. Proves that she's one of the best. Yeah, Look at man. that! Absolutely. Oh man! But that's a late birthday. Party. I'm gonna tell you what. It is. I'll tell you what. Kenny Omega. Amazing. And um, all these, anybody that that says, "What can I do to entertain these people in a way that nobody's done it before?" Right. As the genius, as Leaping Lanny, I tried to do it. Mm. Didn't always succeed. Sometimes I fell short, but I always tried. And I'm still trying. And I want to tell you guys something. This is a good interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you know why? Thank you. Because you guys love wrestling. 
Amen. I feel this. Mm. And I thank both of you for doing your homework. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I think I'm being interviewed by somebody like uh, Jiminy Glick. <laughs> <laughs> can I, well, well, can I say this? I think I love you. Oh, you God. do? I do. I think I love you. I think I love you. I'm going to go get you to a room. <laughs> well, I don't put, I'll get you free pizza and everything. I don't put out. Not after the not after the blade job with Andre. I said, I'm not going to put out. <laughs> yeah, on the, well, the broken nose, which we didn't get into. That's what they make condoms whole, for. Didn't Andre give you a headbutt or something like that? But it's a whole other story. Right? No, he gave me a headbutt, but he didn't break my nose. Oh, he didn't just break a, your nose. He just no, I didn't break my nose. It was, I will tell you this. I, I think I could speak for the Pharaoh. Uh-oh. You, you were uh, now. Uh, one of our childhood heroes yeah. even though we're not that far apart yeah. we really are even we're though not. you hated me yeah listen oh, no, love and hate we, love and hate is a, a big deal it's like a heel evolution with us over the years and and but, I, the but as, a, as a baby face as leaping lanny five years i was getting tired right i needed to rebirth you, you were so good well, at well I, I will I, a couple of sh- couple I will of tell of, you a couple of shots of deca you came a couple of couple of shots of deca and you were you i was rocking and i'm 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 warning you when you pull the needle out, your your libido goes down. Oh. But I was married at the time, so it made no difference. So, oh. <laughs> holy, holy limp Lanny. Yeah. Hey, but I was stronger. Oh I was, it made me stronger. I can bend it with two fingers where I couldn't bend it with two hands. Well, bigger, stronger, and faster. Has it recovered <laughs> since? You okay Has it recovered since? I, 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 don't like to, I don't like to brag, but I buy my condoms 12 at a time. There you go. January. <laughs> <laughs> He said, one trick, one month pony. It was oh, our man, honor to have yes, you on was. our show. Yes, I was. thank you so much. Well, it, was a, it was a big surprise to me because you guys really know your wrestling. And uh, I appreciate the politeness and professionalism that this show has given me. Thank you. And, um, you know, anytime. And Evan... Thank you for introducing me to these. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. As always. Would Thank you, you Jim. Say that this is one of your best wrestling interviews ever Jimbo, on Monty and Farrow. I would say that not only is it the best interview, Holy. it is by it is by far the most recent. Oh, oh, that, we got that yeah. oh, oh my God! God. It's, 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 the oh, logic is overwhelming. Is. I mean, what are you going to do? It's like hanging out with Mr. Spock. I can't argue with the logic. Listen, I'm about to give you a reach around, guy. Oh, We're ready to go. The, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. <laughs> well, 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 again, we want to we want to thank the icon. Leaping Lanny Poffo, the genius, genius the Lanny genius. Poffo. That's right. Uh, the family member of the great Poffo family, brother of Randy Macho Man Savage. Once again, thank you and for joining us. And I would like to us. say, did you see my shirt? We did see your shirt. So on Pro Wrestling Tees. Yeah. Not T-E-A-S-E. Right. T-E-E-S. J. Lethal and Eagles. scroll all the way down. Yep. Lanny Poffo's got a store now. And nice. uh, this is nice. my brother from another mother because Jay Lethal and I are doing He's some fun things. On Ring of Honor. And you know what Randy thought about Jay Lethal? What did he think? Ooh, sincere, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, this guy is good. One. And he had it. And, oh, and yeah. he can imitate Flair. Yeah. Macho Man. Oh, and ooh, an, an, ooh, an, ooh. an incredible wrestler in the ring. And yeah, on his own, player. his individuality. He's great. He's, he's, he's great. And he's a nice person. Is he? Yes. Excellent. And, you know, Evan knows that. What a nice person he is. You know, and uh, you hate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're <laughs> Friend number four thousand nine hundred ninety nine. You know, <laughs> you know we, we we lost a uh, we lost some dear friends. Yes. Uh, Nikolai Volkov. Yes, yes. And um, Jim the Anvil. Jim the Jim Anvil. Anvil and, uh, can yeah. can you can you take a, just a minute or so to talk about both of them and maybe any thoughts, any thoughts on them? both of them in closing? Well, who's next? That's oh. all I got to say. Yeah, and that's why. Treat everybody like it's their last day. Yeah. And um, be kind. And if you have some nice thing to say, say it now. You won't have a chance tomorrow. Well, I love you, brother. Thank you for I coming I love you on. guys. Thank you for coming uh, I love you guys. And uh, Thank you. We're going to be, well, I mean, we're going to be friends. We had fun on the car ride. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. And, uh, Thank you, Bartman. <laughs> yes. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. It was Thank a great ride. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? SpongeBob. <laughs> well, you you, you can have, have a fun on a car, car ride home. Yeah, so you'll be are. all right. Yeah, it's been a great All right, well, so this has been another episode of Monty and the Faro with uh, the great Lanny Poffo. One of the. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview. And once again, I would be remiss not to say thank you, Mr. Jim Savelli, for every week giving us this opportunity to uh, produce this 
wonderful show. Village and Connection, number one. Village Connection is where you have to be. Catch us next week, Thursdays, 8.05 to 9 p.m. Don't forget a special this Sunday edition at 3 p.m. In studio is Hello. Val Venus. Hello, Monty. And uh, again, Wanley, thank you again, sir, for gracing us with your presence. Catch us next week, everybody. Thank you. Later.